Welcome back in, Trey Lowell here with Lowell Productions, and today's video is gonna be centered around creating a thumbnail within Final Cut 10, coming up next. So whether you're a content creator professionally or just an enthusiast, one thing that you have to take in consideration are thumbnails, and they are so valuable it's not even funny. I'll give you an honest opinion. It does not matter if you have the best video you've ever made. If your thumbnail's garbage, it's just not gonna get a lot of views on a lot of social media platforms. So today we're gonna spend some time jumping right into Final Cut 10. We are going to take a screen grab now that we're in Final Cut, and we're gonna come to the top right, uh, like we were exporting a video and we're gonna come down here to save current frame. We're gonna save current frame and then we're gonna save it there. We are then gonna come back into Final Cut. We're gonna create a new project by hitting Command N and boom. Okay, so now that we have our project, we are then going to bring in our raw image that we created earlier, which we're gonna get, hit Command I to import that image. That should be saved in thumbnail. Now that we have brought that in, we are then gonna bring it into our timeline. Similar to like we are we are editing a video, but we're bringing in this thumbnail and we are now gonna work some magic to make this thing look a little bit more pleasing to the eye. Now one thing we're gonna first do is do a little bit of color grading. So balance, okay. Come here, go to the exposure, kick the highlights up just a tad. We're gonna work with the shadows and crank those down quite a bit. And our mid-tones, we're just gonna really crush. Probably take those shadows back up to about a negative six. Okay. Then also we're gonna come into our effects. We're gonna go to color board. We're gonna add another color board, but this time we're gonna do a little bit of a shape mask. And this is gonna be kind of a nice little trick because we're gonna make certain portions of the actual image pop a little bit more than others. So as far as the shape mask goes, we're gonna click on there. And you're gonna see that it comes in kind of like a circle. I'm gonna go to this gray area, which is then gonna allow us to manipulate it to more of a square if we'd like. And the idea here is that we're going to darken everything except myself being on the computer. And then we're actually gonna put our text over in this dead area or dead space, which is kind of like the equipment shelves. So we are going to start adjusting and separating the two different scenes. And then that's gonna give us wiggle room for over here where all our text is gonna be going. That's where we're gonna really crush everything in regards to just bringing down how dark it is there. And we're gonna use a couple of other tricks here in just a second to kind of bring the whole scene to life as well. Now, as far as color grading, we're gonna go back to our original color board. I didn't actually add any saturation. And because it's a thumbnail, we're gonna get a little silly here. I'm gonna bring up a lot of color. It's just a part of kind of my particular style. I do like a lot of color. Um, I like a lot of saturation, particularly in my thumbnails. I think it's a little bit more catchy and a little bit more poppy. And we're also gonna come back. We're gonna scale up this image a little bit more because we don't need a, we get the point across that I'm on a computer so we can actually shift myself over to the right a little bit more Now, this is where we're gonna kind of work our magic in regards to where we're gonna place our text and what we're gonna do with this dead space uh, on my right shoulder, kind of the left side of the image. We're really gonna darken it and we're gonna put a Gaussian blur as well so that we can really make our text and our font pop over there. Um, now, to give you guys an understanding of what I'm saying text and the font, we're gonna bring in, we're gonna hit Control T which is gonna bring in your basic title. I just think that's a quick, simple way to get what you need, just Control T. And then my go-to, I just like to add my shapes. Very simple, we're gonna do a rectangle here. Go to Generators, and we'll type in Shapes. And I like to use Shape over Custom because you'll get a little bit of a drop shadow automatically, but we will actually lower that. Come up to the top right, we're gonna change it from a circle to a rectangle. Gonna get rid of the outline fill it, we're gonna make it the lower production's green. Also, opacity, make about a 98, I think. I wanna make it a little clear, see-through, not too much. 
Okay, drag that out there. And I'm actually gonna run it over my head a little bit, but then we're gonna crop that out with a little bit of a draw mask. So now that you guys can kind of see where we're at, we're gonna probably skim that down just a little bit, make that shape a little bit skinnier. And then we're going to make it go behind my hat, which we're going to use a draw mask. Come over to our effects, type in draw, pop that on our shape. We're gonna then do a couple of control points, connect the dots. Now we actually want to invert it. So come over here and do the invert. We're gonna scale up, make sure that this is a nice tight edge on the hat. Wow, I did a pretty good job with just eyeballing it. Scale back out. I highly recommend scaling in when doing some draw masking and things like that, just cause the tighter that you can get it, the more pro it's gonna look. And then, so we'll just duplicate that as far as our font goes. And FCPX, we will also change that to code light. I like to kinda switch up the fonts. Uh, we're gonna make that super big though. Tracking, we're gonna need to track it quite far because it's a very thin font. There we go. Okay, and adding the outline, we made it white. We're actually gonna go to, I think, two. Beef it up a little bit. Sometimes that font's a little too thin. Our shape, we're actually gonna hit Alt. We're gonna duplicate it. We're gonna drag it down here. We're actually gonna change the color to that Lowell Productions yellow, which I like. We are going to remove our draw mask, not needed for this one. And we're also going to expand that shape, make it a little bit taller. And because that white just does not pop on the yellow, we're gonna then change the font to the Lowell Productions green. Make that hunter green come to the face, change it from white down to my custom green. And then we also need to change our outline that we added to that custom green as well. And we are now in business. Pro Thumbnails FCPX. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit of a Gaussian blur. Guys, come over to Effects, type in G8U Gaussian. It's gonna put it on all of it. You're gonna freak out for a second, that's okay. We're then going to come to our little shape mask. Boom. It's the, I guess, square with the circle inside of it shape mask on the Gaussian blur and then we're going to take this like we did earlier it's going to be a little bit of a circle so we want to go up to that little like clear slash gray dot turn it into more of a square and we're going to bring it down to like 10. no need to do overkill here just really trying to actually i'm going to do even less let's do like five okay so now we're going to add one more color board we're going to do a shape mask again this time it's again making it more of a square ish scaling it up covering up that whole bad boy right there and we're going to just darken this whole section over here bringing that exposure down Beef up that Gaussian to a 10 now. I can see what it's looking like. And then we're gonna add the all famous streaks. Which is gonna be probably crazy in the beginning. Boom, everywhere. But, huh. We're gonna have some ridiculous fun with this and we're gonna invert the streaks. And I think I'm gonna have a lot except for around me. And some people think this is gonna probably be absolutely stupid, but I think this is gonna be awesome. So currently it is an absorbent amount. So we're gonna kick that down to about 20 on the glow factor on the streaks. See what that does. Did some pretty serious damage. Um, also, as far as the shape mask itself, I do want the roll off to be a little bit more, so we're gonna spread this out. So now that we have got our title placed, we've got our streaks in, we've sharpened the image. There's only one other thing I really wanna do, and that's add a Final Cut kind of logo PNG 
uh, most likely in the bottom left corner so people can kind of get a point across that it's Final Cut. And we're gonna import that Final Cut logo. Cut out, I have one on my hard drive just because I've done images with it. So we bring that in, Command I. There's that PNG of Final Cut logo. Click on it. Scale it down a little bit and over. So we're gonna scale it to, I say let's do 70. There we go. Okay, so now that I've got it positioned where I want, we are then gonna do the shape mask behind So now that we are pretty much finished, let's go ahead and give you guys a quick glance at where we started at by deactivating all of our effects and our titles real quick. Boom. There we are. There's where we started. Very gray, very flat, not exciting at all. And then we build from there, adding all of our effects that we walk through. We're going to add our final cut image, our yellow rectangle, our green rectangle, and our text. And once that is all done, we're going to go up into the top right corner. We're gonna hit where we would normally export a video. We're going to scroll down to save current frame. Once we've done that, we have our final product. So hey guys, it's Trey Lowell with Lowell Productions. And as always, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like the content I keep creating on this channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next video. Woo! Hopefully that thumbnail actually is catchy and gets some views and teaches you guys, you know, an easy way to spice up your content and grab that attention and get more views. That way you're not spending all this time and effort to just have someone else with a cheesy thumbnail go ahead and blow you away with views. Oh, wow, that took a lot longer than I thought. It almost took a flipping hour.